Hello again, Houseboats. It's Chunk Fracas Reads. So let's see how the journey continues for Liam. At launch minus six, I was still insanely hoping that Dad would actually turn up. Especially at launch minus six, to be honest. Because at launch minus five, they were going to do the spray on Power Ranger suit, space shoot things. The thing about spray on space shoots is that you have to have a bold chest before they put the stuff on you. So if you're a dad, you have to have your chest waxed. This means they pour warm wax all over you and then rip it off and strip off cloth. When the wax comes off, it pulls all your chest hairs off out with it. At launch for minus five, my dad still hadn't come and I was screaming in pain and looking at pieces of wax covered in curly hairs that had been pulled out by the root. There, said Dr Drax, the agony of re-entry will be nothing after that. Apparently, women do it all the time on their legs and they don't even get to go into space afterwards. After that, they sprayed on my space chute. It felt warm and tickly and I was allowed to go back into the living quarters and wait for it to dry. When I got there, Mr Bean was waiting for me. He shook my hand and wished me well. You take care of yourself now, he said. I said, I thought you were going to be taking care of us. I thought all we had to do was enjoy the view. He laughed. Then he said, since you mentioned the view, there was something I wanted to tell you. You got your pips right? Yes. Think hard about where you put, uh, what you put in there. It could be the most important piece of safety equipment. What? More important than our space suits? Maybe. You see, the thing about space is, I said, it's full of dead people. You already told me. Space is somewhere else, you see. It's not just far away. It's a different kind of place. It can get a hold of you. Are you saying you'll like it when you're there? He smiled. My mother used to say that. Did yours? He looked out of the window. Even though it was daylight, you could still see the moon. Pale, but huge, like a big balloon. He said, do you ever hear of Ed White, first American to spacewalk? A long time ago now, 1965. First American to open a door into space, to dangle from a wire and look down at Earth and see the, uh, see the whole planet roll beneath him. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. Everything he knew, he didn't know. His friends, enemies, places he'd been, places he'd never, he'd never go, all just sitting there in his field of visions. When it was time to go back inside, he couldn't tear himself away. He was like, ah, let me stay a little while, why don't you? And isn't this, isn't that America? Oh no, it's Africa. And you know, the command pilot, Jim McDivitt, he had to ball him out to bring him back to his senses. Do you see what I'm saying? I said, not really. Florida had just arrived in her Power Rangers get up. She said, we're supposed to keep moving around to check the uh, fissures and floors. Mr Bean went on. I'm, t I'm talking about how to stay in one piece. Try to get hold of the things that are important to you, the good and true things about your life. Up there is, is some kind of lovely, and maybe you need to have something in your heart, you know, something even more lovely to help you find your way home. Otherwise, you may, uh, you may be, you could become bemused. Bemused? I think that was the word. I, I'll say good night. Good night, Mr. Bean. He smiled and said, call me Alan. Just as he was about to go out the door, Florida shouted, wait, Alan Bean, Apollo 12, 1969. That is cosmic. It's the first time she'd ever used my words. There's, there, there probably isn't any other word for being able to touch someone who had walked on another world. Wow, said Florida. An Apollo astronaut? That makes you dead famous, doesn't it? I mean, you had ticker, ticker tape parades and went, on, went to all these parties and you were on the telly all over the world. I wasn't on telly so much, actually. I broke the television camera. When we landed on Moon, I accidentally pointed the camera at the sun and it burned, burned it out. Imagine that. We went all the way to the Moon and didn't get any holiday footage so not on telly as much as some what i remember is being on the moon i remember every second every stone every star we saw sometimes it feel like, feels like i can never really come back he shrugged but i did come back he says and you'll remember that where you're going it seems far away and dangerous but you will come back 
which is more or less exactly what my dad said to me on my first day of school at Waterloo High. As soon as Alan had gone, I wedged my old phone into the pip because it had pictures of home on it and Dad sent Christopher statue. It wouldn't have fitted if it had been a bit broke if it hadn't been a bit broken. Florida said, What are you taking that for? I said, Why? What are you taking? She said, Harry Bows mostly. When we left the crew let me start again, sorry. When we left the crew quarters the next day, the dads were all waiting by the transporter, ready to say their goodbyes. Monsoor Marinette, Samson One and Eddie, with two security guards, one on each side of him. They chatted to their boys, rubbed their ha- uh, hair and punched them in, in the shoulder. Samson One shouted to me, look after my boy now. I had one last crazy hopeful thought that my dad might show up with the others, but he didn't. At least I had I had Alan to talk to. Dr. Drax gave us all a lighter than air ice lolly shaped like a dandelion. A last minute treat, she smiled. When Infinity Park opens, we're going to sell these all over the world. Aren't they just delicious? Oh, by the way, I have to ask you all to hand in your new Drax phones just to protect the secrecy of the mission. The first thing I the first thing I did when I got onto the flight deck was shuffle Dad St. Christopher out of my pip and wedge it into the instrument panel. The whole rocket was throbbing, so St. Christopher looked as though he was doing some kind of mad dance. The other thing that I found in there was a, was the little credit card stress tester. As I picked it up, it changed from blue to pink, and a message appeared, just one word, stressed. The infinite possibility was 200 feet high. At the top, you could, uh, you could feel it swaying in the wind, and you could hear, wind, hear the wind rolling in and out of the pipes and engines, sobbing and sighing, and generally sounding miserable. As the responsible adult, I had to do all the last-minute checks. All the way through, Samson too kept shouting, Space facts. I suppose it was his way of coping. Do you know, he said, the exposure of a we- to weightless- weightlessness means you grow. Because there's less pressure on your spinal column, it relaxes and then makes you taller. Just what I need, I thought. A few more inches. I said, we could have we could have a see how you grow chart just to see if it's true. A kind of experiment. I made them all line up so I could mark their heights on the back of the safety door, just to take their minds off things. Max suddenly said, I'm not frightened. When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Also, only the strong survive. And I am strong. Yes, but no, I'm not so strong, said Hassan. Does that mean I won't survive? Where's my daddy? I want my daddy. Florida said, your daddy's probably in jail by now, which didn't help. The stress te- uh, tester had changed from pink to scarlet. The message read, see doctor immediately. I said, we're all worried about takeoff. Let's stop thinking about it. Let's think about uh, inflating out, inflating, uh, inflating our space chutes. In fact, let's do it. It hadn't just been the electric, uh, electric Ribena, it was right. It was distractingly funny. The kids all sat in their places. I made sure they were strapped in, made sure the suits were on properly, made sure they all remembered the inflation button, where the inflation buttons were, then got into my own place and shouted, three, two, one. The suits began to hiss and grow, and we all swelled up like, uh, up like giggling tangerines again. The suits expanded into every corner of the mould, with just our heads sticking out. Then the countdown started. 20, 19, 18. I need a wee, said Hassan. Then do one. You've got your space on, don't forget. Alan uh, Alan Shepard wet himself just before Freedom 7 took off, said Florida. No one else heard her say this because there was a sound like mountain snoring. Everything shook like the worst earthquake film you'd ever seen. Our stomachs dropped to the floor. The rest of uh, ourselves dropped to the floor, and suddenly it felt like we was a. There was re- was a giant invisible dad, but he was furious. He was crushing us between the palms of his hands, and we could do nothing because our arms wouldn't move. We couldn't shout because our faces wouldn't work. And I remember thinking, if this is what it takes to get us up there, what is it going to take to get us down? So we're going to stop there and we'll continue to read some more tomorrow. Bye.